I started in male mental health rehabilitation as a band five um, and absolutely loved it. My, my background was actually in learning disabilities, but um, in, in Signet, it was, I came into mental health and it probably just changed my viewpoint. I remember just thinking, wow, I always thought I would stay in learning disabilities um, hadn't really considered mental health. Um, but I absolutely, yeah, I fell in love with the job, fell in love with um, working with this um, patient caseload, really. Um, did that for a number of years. And then I was really fortunate that I was um, able to become like a senior um, OT, so like a band six. And then as time went on, there were lots of changes within the company, kind of just as within the National Health Service, really. Um, and um, we had a retool and our service became um, a PICU ward, so a psychiatric intensive care unit. Um, and then probably, say, about six months later, we opened up um, an additional ward or an, an acute ward. Um, and that was just like a breath of fresh air for me, because I think sometimes you work in a service for so long and then naturally the time comes where you think I'm ready for the next step. Um, but I absolutely love the team. I've always loved working with this team. And um, so when we retooled and became an acute and picky for me, it was like having the best of both worlds. So got to stay with the team, but work in a different kind of um, service line. Um, and then I would say probably not too long after I was really fortunate to become the clinical lead for acute and picky services. The service line was in its infancy at that time um, and it's really quickly expanded throughout the company. Um, and I guess that's where we've had the national shortage of beds within the NHS. Um, so we've really seen an expansion there. Um, so, yeah, and that's 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 what I've been doing. Um, and that's where I'm at currently. I started my OT career with Signet in 2005, where I joined the company as a support worker. I then moved on to become a therapy coordinator and after a year, was chosen to do the OTA training, which was being held in Bourneville, which I did for 12 months. Um, I then came back and did a year or so using the skills and the experience I'd gained from the course um, as an OTA. And then the company seconded me in 2008 to do um, my OT degree, which I completed in 2012, and I've worked ever since um, the first two years I worked at Sherwood House as um, me Mental Health Band 5 um, and joined Neuropsychiatric Services as Band 6 uh, at the Grange and Lodge in Sutton in Ashfield and then I, over this past year I have progressed to Band 7 at Pinder House in Barnsley and it's a job I love because no two days are the same. There's a, ver a there's always something new, always, I'm always learning, I'm always finding new things, new challenges, and I love it. <laughs> I'm one of these people who believe in paying it forward in a way, so if I've been given the opportunities to grow, I want to help others to grow as well. And so this is probably one of the reasons I'm so passionate about things like having student um, OTs, um, bringing people from the support worker role up into therapy to become assistants and to move on to doing their own degree. Um, also, I feel that, like I've already said, no two days are the same. I'm all, if I'm not, if you're not learning something new every day, then it gets quite, it could easily get stale. But that's never been an issue for me. I'm always looking at new ways of, to support the patients in our care and support the staff as well to uh, to empower them and to move forward because I've seen for myself the benefits of doing so. I think OTs are truly valued and I think as a profession we're really misunderstood so probably the most important thing for any OT is to be in a company where you are more understood, you are really valued and um, so when you sit within a multidisciplinary team you actually feel you can um, Come about with change you can be an advocate a true advocate for your patient and those things aren't squashed they're heard and um, so you feel like you can actually really make a difference and it sounds pretty corny um but it gives you that kind of satisfaction and reward and that's that's pretty much why i think most people want to become ot's anyway um and i think as much as 
companies often might look at growth where we've been really fortunate is we just receive so much support. So whether or not it's from the wider OT network, um, even if you were a lone working OT in a service somewhere, there is just an email away, a telephone call away to so many OTs within the company. Um, and it can be specific to your service line. It can be specific to a specialism that you can really just lend on for support. And I just find that invaluable. Um, and equally with the OT directors, I think even when things become challenging, the support is just never ending. I always think back to when I first knew I wanted to become an OT. I lived in Africa and I was watching um, an OT who was also qualified in sensory integration. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is incredible. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, but this looks amazing and I want to do this. Um, and I think about two, almost a year ago, I qualified in sensory integration therapy and it was a real kind of moment for me where I took myself back to when I first started learning about the profession and thinking, you know, I kind of come full circle and a lot of things that you think you don't always have the confidence to do, you can really develop and you get the support to do it, whether it's um, publishing research, whether it's presenting at conferences, whether it's teaching at universities, where it's being a, a, an inspector, doing peer reviews at other sites outside of the company. There's so many opportunities and I've only really been able to kind of expand all of those within this company. And that's through the support I've received, you know, kind of through my own hospital team, but also through um, the OT managers. So when you've got that kind of autonomy and that kind of value, it's, it says a lot for you, it does a lot for you. and. It's those sort of things I think that people are looking for when they when they become occupational therapists.